Hi guys, it's Barnaby for Spurred On. I'm here with the fantastic Smiv and Reese James, who's slightly less fantastic, for another episode of our big conversation. Uh, this is the show where we talk about kind of big topics about Spurs uh, and really debate it out, wonder what we can do, etc., etc. So today the topic is, what do Spurs need to do to go to the next level? Um, we talked a little bit about this actually before the camera started rolling and Smiv asked a great question, which is, what is the next level? Uh, so I'm just going to start by saying, in my opinion, the next level for Spurs is regular Champions League football. But Smith, you may think differently. I'm going to come to you first. You know, uh, what, what are your opening thoughts on, on what Spurs might need to do to, to push on that further, further ladder? Um, I think since we've been in the Champions League, I think a lot of people were classing us as a top four club, but we haven't actually proven it because we've not got there. Sure. Although we did do that one season where we were chucked out of it, thanks to Chelsea beating Bayern Munich fantastically for them, but yeah. not for us. But, yeah, like you say, we need to be in that top four regularly. We're, we're basically living in that fifth place spot. That's mm -hmm. ours. We live there. We've got the keys to it. We can have it when we want. But Liverpool want it. We yeah, Liverpool would love it, but it. we want to move out. So yeah. we want to move into the top four, and that is the plan. I mean, with Chelsea this season underperforming, Liverpool aren't that top four side anymore. There is room for yeah. us, and, and we just need to challenge, and I think we just need to turn those draws into wins now. But I think massive improvement this season already. Yeah. You know, it's strange, isn't it, to be so positive about a Spurs, yeah. a, a Spurs side, not just the side, but the squad, mm. the management, and it's a feeling, it's kind of a feel-good factor feeling at the moment. It's, yeah. it's a bit of a strange one. Um, is, uh, first question for you, Reese. is there a mentality shift at Spurs that has already kind of started that needs to go further for us to really push on uh, towards those, those top four regulars. Yeah, well, I think this is part of the problem, is the way we're defining the next level of being regularly in a top four, I get that sort of realistic, and that is the next step up. Mm -hmm. But I think the mentality issue is we need to be stop thinking of top four as first place and start thinking of first place, especially this year. It's a real opportunity here. There's only really two teams who look like they're in a title contention, but we haven't lost since the first day. We also look quality. We beat and drew with them. Yeah. Uh, there's no reason for us not to think, why can't we press on? Like, not maybe this mm. year, but next year. Mm -hmm. um, so more of a shoot for the moon and... Exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And because uh, there's only really one team who for the last few years has aimed for top four as a target and got it, and that's Arsenal who consistently mm. do that. Mm. But all the other teams who get in the top four are aiming for the league. And yeah. why aren't we doing that? We've got a young side, we look quality, we're all a proper team for the first time in mm. years. And why are we not aiming for the top spot? Yeah, do you know what? Actually, uh, Harry Redknapp, who obviously gets a lot of stick, he, when he had Modric and Bale at Spurs, he did sta start saying, uh, I think in a season or two's time, this is a team that could uh, really push for the title. And I think mm. it's not just the wider uh, football community, but Spurs fans as well were like, mm, I think he's probably being a bit Redknappy here and gone a bit too mm. far. Yeah. But actually, I think now in hindsight, we probably all look back at that and say, actually, if we could have kept that, that team squad. together, yeah, they were an mm. amazing squad. So is it a matter then of, um, you know, if we did want to challenge for a title, is it a matter of trying to buy or maybe even develop our current players into those world-class player bracket? I think we've got a great squad at the moment, a lot of young English talented players mm -hmm. but and yeah. Belgium and Belgium of course yeah but um, yeah it is about kicking on I mean they're going to grow they're going to gain more confidence from what they're doing and what they're doing so far has just been fantastic we haven't lost since the first game of the mm -hmm. season that's that's like is this uh, how does this compare to a run in the Premier League is this one of our best so far yeah or? there was a good question there was a run of I think 12 games this if we if we don't lose to West Ham at the weekend um, there's a there was a run of 12 games a few years ago uh, running into the Christmas period mm. where we didn't lose um, uh, but that is our longest so it would right. it would be equaling our, our longest yeah. too right and all as well I mean great opportunity to beat West Ham so why can't we do that and why can't we push on even more because if we do win that we, we will be in that top four ascendancy straight away and you know what we're only three points is it off of the top spot? Yeah, three. Uh, well, no, we're five points five off the points, top. Sorry. Five points off City and Arsenal, three points off Manchester United in fourth at the moment. But uh, actually, this is something to bring up. In no uh, memory of mine have Spurs had a goal difference of 10, yeah. exactly. even at the end of the season, I think. But n at this stage of the season, it's unheard that's of for us. That's the big thing that's mm. changed, is we can defend now. We've yeah. always been quite good at scoring, yeah. uh, but we just concede so much. And now we've got the Belgian contingent in the mm. centre-back yeah, good and mates, and Dyer best in buds, front of them. Yeah. yeah, and you've got Dyer in front of them. Uh, so it's just a much better, we just look, I just feel more confident going into games now because I yeah. just think well, there's no reason we should be conceding two or three or sometimes four or five when you've got Kabul and when you yeah. had Fazio and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So 
I am more confident, yeah. And I do think, we, yeah, we want to be looking at looking at the top spot. I don't want to get in a few years' time and have another thing where we go, oh, we all sort of thought, you know, we had a squad like Ericsson and Kane and Vertonghen yeah. and Lloris, and yeah, we all thought, gone, um, yeah. oh, it's too ambitious to say we could win the league. And they're all gone mm. to different clubs, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich. Yeah. Spot on with the goal difference, though. Spot on. Because we sit in that fifth place all year. And even the teams below us have a, a positive goal That's difference. Right. They might be on sevens, eights, nines, yeah. but we're always on that plus one, minus one thing because we we win games two one, we lose games two one, or you know. But then we the would one. lose the odd game four or five exactly. against and the it, big it clubs. Exactly, it brings it down straight away. But you look at that top four every single season; they're sort of plus ten and more, twenties, thirties, and I think that's where we need to get to. You yeah. know, we need to, you know, crack on with their clean, them clean sheets and. Yeah. Is it, is it potentially a bigger question, though, about, and, and this is something I always bring up when, when people ask whether Spurs uh, can challenge for the title or go top four or whatever, is it a bigger fact of until, you know, I'm just playing devil's advocate, until we are able to pay the wages that the top, top players uh, require and insist on, then we will always be below that. Now, obviously, we know Chelsea are on a bad run, mm. but the reality is or not the reality, but in my opinion, there is only one club in the league that could potentially go on like a 12 or 13 match winning run, and that is them. And that's because they have, you know, players who are of the level of 150, 200,000 pounds a week. Man City could maybe as well. I think we talked about it a bit earlier. Our wage, our top wage level is about 100 grand a week and has been for the last five years. I know Ledley King was on that mm. um, and Adebayo was on that. Uh, do we need to be able to, do we need to fight, does Levy need to open the purse strings to allow us to bring players like that in? Or, you know, is that just not you realistic? Know I think it's going to maybe go the other way around. So I think if we get Champions League this year, which there's no real reason we shouldn't, mm. then as a result of that, he'll have the money to open the purse strings. And, right. And you've also, you've also got the, the new stadium as well. Mm. So yeah. um, Arsenal always brag about the fact that, you know, despite having their stadium to pay for, they consistently got in that top sure. four and that's now paid for, and now they're going to crack on and do better. And, and, and they have, which I hate to say. They are, but and they're buying £40 million pound exactly, players. Exactly, yeah, mm. they've got to that point. Whereas, and, and their fans over that time were very frustrated because they weren't buying anyone. But at the same time, they were still getting above us and many yeah. other teams in the league. They were getting that top four. They were getting that Champions League football, and they were paying that stadium off straight away. And I think, I hate to say it, but they gave, did really well out of that. Yeah, and we need to kind of do the same. Whether we win the league or not, you know, regardless, we need to stay you know, positive and we need to stay amongst that top four. So is it maybe that we keep keep our young English side until our stadium's paid off? Yeah, Do we keep persevering with the players I'd we've got rather than trying to make a big sort of marquee signing? Is yeah. that what you think we should do? I mean, I've grown up, you know, my dad introduced me to Tottenham as a cup side and I would love it for the mm. next five, six years, we go on cup runs, we win cups as well, we win silverware, we have great runs. I, you know, I've never seen Spurs win the league and I don't think I'm going to see it anytime soon, but... You know, that is, you know, you need to get that platform and we need to get yeah. that financial yeah. stability because if you do, you know, open those purse strings too early, you can look at teams like Leeds, Leeds that have, yeah. have, have completely collapsed. Newcastle were one of them. They had it yeah. at their clutches, but look at them now. It's, it's, yeah. it's ridiculous. And it is a shame. They were a big club and they still have a massive stadium that they yeah. need to fill mm. as well. Is, is this the moment then where we should, you know, congratulate Daniel Levy on the fact that he has, you know, for someone who gets as much abuse as he does, not just from... Uh, fans of other clubs because he tries to steal their players on the cheap but from Spurs fans for not throwing enough money at it actually he has a plan he has a, 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 a way of doing things that mean that we're always afloat we're always coming around the top five top six mm. you know when I was growing up we were relegation fodder you know mm. and actually yeah. Daniel Levy came in as chairman under Enoch and has turned us into that top five top 16 maybe we should give him some congratulations and appreciate what he's done for the club rather than look at the negatives of oh he hasn't spent money like man city or he hasn't spent money like chelsea you know yeah he does clearly i think he does have a plan we're the most profitable club in europe mm. i mean like mm. he doesn't get enough credit does he leave it's just because he's a bit weird <laughs> he's a bit weird yeah. and he, 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 you're a football fan yeah. so you want transfer deadline day you want a big 50 million pound signing you go yes because that's what we're that's, mm. that's the he excitement of it it's band, the soap yeah. opera isn't it but yeah. realistically we've got a great squad yeah. there's no one I can think of that I'd want to spend 50 million on to bring in I don't know where they get in the squad at the moment the yeah. starting 11 um, so yeah I don't know I think I'm at the moment I'm fairly happy with Levy I think he's doing yeah, I think, I think a lot good. of people when it's bad people say oh he's a businessman but when it's good I'm saying he's a businessman yeah. and yeah, he's yeah, done yeah. really well out of it. So there's, there's pluses and negatives. But, you know, I, I think, you know, hats off to him for keeping the club stable. Like you say, we were relegation material. And, and even when I was growing up, we were mid-table battling with West Ham to mm, come 10th yeah. or 11th. Like, 
I'm, I'm really happy that I we I didn't like the way you said that as if like when you grew up, it was 10 years after when I grew up. Mate. I'm not at all, no. Yeah, you're, Jesus. You're, well, you've just turned... I'm 18, mate. Yeah, that's what I thought. But no, yeah, <laughs> battling with West Ham. We were, no, absolutely. Like mid-table, mid battling with West Ham and stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to ask one more question. It's a, it's a controversial one. Mm. I think we, you know, what we've kind of all agreed on in this is actually we love the way it's going. Mm. The team are kind of growing together. We do feel for the first time like it's a team rather than one kind of um, nearly world-class player who's mm. scoring all our goals and then the rest kind of trying to do the job for him. It's an actual team. Everyone's mm. contributing from all across the pitch. We're defensively sound. And I think we like the management, don't we? We like what Poch is yeah. doing. We like how he's blowing things. I have a question, which is, Two, twofold. One, would you be interested in this? And two, do you think Levy would be interested in this? If a world-class manager, I'm going to use this as an example, if Mourinho were to be sacked from Chelsea and suddenly started making the glad eyes at Spurs and saying, I want to, you know, so let's say he went into Levy, because they have had discussions before. Levy offered him a job once before. If he said, you know, I want to show Chelsea what mistake they've made, I want to come and be Spurs manager. Do you, firstly, would you be interested in having a proven winner like that as the manager and say to Pochino, thank you. Like similar to how he did with Redknapp, thank you, you've done a great job, but we're gonna try and find something more. And would you be interested? And secondly, do you think Daniel Levy would be interested? And I'm gonna start with Reese James. Um, right now, I would not change the management because talking about Daniel Levy maybe having a plan, I mean, Poch definitely has a plan mm -hmm. and it's really this season feels like everyone has started subscribing to it. If, look at Dembele, the transformation of Dembele. Yeah, He's properly, he suddenly become our best player. He was AWOL mm. for a yeah. year, and suddenly he's the best man. He's the first name on the team sheet for yeah. me. He's been absolutely class the last four or five games, and I just think it's all about this philosophy. It's all about this style of play that's completely transformed Tottenham from a counter-attacking team to now a possession team yeah. uh, who can dominate games and just try and break down a, a back four, and it's great. And why would you want to bring in Mourinho, why do you want to rock the boat in this sure. situation? Everyone's finally got on board, we're really starting to progress, we're doing great things. Mourinho has lost his mind, frankly. Uh, I mean, I was using him as an example, yeah. but yeah. Okay, well any world-class manager, I think at the moment, I think you've got, you've got to let Poch see this out, see yeah. what happens. If suddenly it mm. starts waning and we really start struggling, maybe. But even then, I'd, you've got to give him time. I think he's got, okay. he's got a real plan. And do you think Levy feels the same way as you? Do you think, I he, think he, he would does. be loyal? Oh, it's Daniel Levy, isn't it? <laughs> um, I, I would hope. I would hope. I would hope he'd be loyal. Okay, and Smiv? Yeah, same. I would hope that he's seen the improvement and the stability in the team, and you know, we look solid at the back, especially. And um, yeah, no, I, I definitely wouldn't want to get rid of Poch. He's yeah. certainly turned us around. I, I loved Harry Redknapp. I really did. Yeah. But there's something about this team, and it might not be the most entertaining. We might not be winning four or five nil one week and then mm. losing. But you know. There's 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 a rock there now, yeah. and I just and consistency. Consistency is good, and I like consistency. Um, I think on the flip side of that, we want to maybe be looking out for teams that want to poach poch. Right. Yeah. Poach poch is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. Because you know managers do get their plaudits, and, and Spurs are one of those teams now. Uh, despite still sitting in that fifth place or wherever they are on the table right now, they they are going places. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are looking at them and saying, okay, unbeaten runs. They look more solid. He's done that. Mm. He has. Quite clearly. Oh God, I'd hate, I'd hate bloody Perez at Real Madrid to come in for him. That would be horrible. He's yeah, not. But, he's but it strikes me that actually this is interesting actually because I think big clubs of the ilk of you know United, City, Barca, Real Madrid, they look at managers who have dealt with huge name players. Mm. And actually, what might be in our favour with Pochettino mm. not mm. getting poached is he's someone who builds from youth. You know, the, yeah. the the stats of how many of the last blooded England players, something like. I don't know, 75% of the last uh, 20 England players to make their debuts have all been trained by Poch. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think that really necessarily yeah, suits thinking, those big clubs so Mourinho well. Let's say Mourinho gets sacked, you can't see Poch going in and dealing with John Terry, being no. bothered to deal with John Terry, no, can you? No, I hope you? not, I no. hope not. Um, and, and just to finish that off, uh, you know, in my opinion, I don't think Daniel Levy would probably want a big ego manager right now either. And, and what Poch really does is says the right things media-wise. Yeah and probably doesn't rock the boat too much. No. Anyway, that uh, was the end of our what do we need to do to get to the next level mm. uh, conversation, the big conversation. Guys, let us know what you thought in the comments section below. Do you agree with Smiv? Do you agree with Reese? Do you agree with us all? Or do you disagree? Tell us. Let us know. Drop the video a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at SpurredOnTV. Come on, you Spurs. Let's get straight on with it. Today, the topic is how far can Spurs go under Pochettino both this season 
and in the future. And I'm going to come to Craig Mitch first. What do you think of the Poch revolution, <coughs> Craig? 